And welcome back to Amy Park with uh, a similar oh, no, opening no, no, no. to our match that involves the Warriors with Brendan Martin leading a section of the crowd in the rendition by the Kiwi locals of their haka in front of a very, very good crowd. rendition of the Haka as impromptu as it may have been and uh, you can see the Warriors about to be told to take the field for their preliminary final it's their seventh visit to the finals and their fourth preliminary final in fact they have almost got the best record of any team in the competition against Melbourne particularly here in Melbourne one of only two this year to beat the storm in their own backyard Overall, in fact, they've met 28 times against the Storm and they've won 12 and they've only lost three of their last eight. They come out to a good reception, the Warriors. They well might remember the team that came here and beat Melbourne as teammates against Team 1 in 2008. They inflicted defeat on Melbourne, who were the minor premiers in that year. So the Storm have never lost a preliminary final. Five of them, in fact. Some of the junior teams from down here in Victoria forming a guard of honour. There is no greater rivalry than the one between Melbourne and the Warriors. Although that might well be in question if Melbourne make it through to Manly in the big one next weekend. Minor Premiers Club champions this year, wrapping up seven Dally M's. Beaten only twice this season on this ground. 11 from 13. Cameron Smith with a chance to play in his fourth grand final. Bo Champion leaves the club to go to the Gold Coast. And Billy Slater, there's not, a, not an award he hasn't won. The trophy cabinet not big enough any longer to house the silverware in the Slater household. Well, this crowd is massive. By Melbourne standards, I'm positive it's a ground record crowd and the biggest crowd attracted by these two sides right so now. we're looking at 25,000 I would say possibly a tad more right, I'm just looking at a group of corporate seats that are vacant but here is the kickoff to the second preliminary Thanks, mate. we'll know the grand finalist in 80 minutes I hope Bromwich comes back 15 meters Come out from the line one of four oh, Melbourne Storm players born in New Zealand, and this is Brian Norrie. And the Warriors up with enthusiasm in their, in their defensive line, and the ball again finds its way back to Bromwich. And he plays the ball, and they go right side for Proctor. And Proctor is out almost at the 40 metre line. Third tackle, Proctor. Getting up with some aggression to play the ball. Cameron Smith taking it to halfway for the kick. And his cronk. And the kick from him is going down towards Manu. Now it's Tupo. And uh, it is Tupo who brings the ball back to the 20 metre line. And the Storm putting numbers into the tackle. Driving him back as Manu led the way there. Sikamanu, that is. And this is Simon Mannering. 
ball played then by their captain, and here is Young Lock. 35 away from his own line. Warriors looking for their second grand final. They went there in 2002. And of course, they went down to the Roosters in that year, played there by Lilliman. Ball goes away for Packer. And he takes it up to the halfway line. Played back for Ho Higher. And then away for Maloney. He's taken down by Cameron Smith. Slater comes back. He runs away from one. He went through Taylor and he came to Lilliman. Cameron Smith on Maloney looked to me to be a shade high. It may have bounced off the shoulder. Played by Duffy right in the middle of the ground. And here's Lowry now for Melbourne. Seven or eight metres into Warriors territory and Cronk goes short and it's away to Proctor. Cameron. Cooper Cronk goes back towards the Blind side where Bo Champion is the right side centre. Smith now putting it up. High, Locke is coming after it, does well. Though there is no contest, he's wrapped up by Widdop. And as we expected and hoped, a strong physical start from both teams defensively, getting numbers in tackles. Now, penalties have been a problem for some teams. They were last night for the Brisbane Broncos against Manly, and last week, the Warriors 9-4. I'll need to have good discipline out there. Keep the hand off the football when they're making tackles. The referees have penalised that. Mannering now. Tackle just inside the 40-metre line. I'm watching Vatave over on the left side of the ground. That's the way they're heading. And he had come in field looking for what we call a forward run. But they didn't use him that time. And it's gone off the boot of Maloney again. It's gone down close to the sideline. In fact, it's a big bounce. And Anthony Quinn comes away from 15 out from his own line. Inu is with him. Mannering is there. Inu in what might be best described as a pair of pink, uh, pinkish boots. Slater in a pair of bright orange boots or shoes. That's the 30-metre line, Melbourne's end of the ground. And Smith it is that finds Duffy. And Duffy has got a New Zealand cap to his credit. He'll play the ball just inside the 40-metre line. Cameron Smith goes out, has a little look at them, and then gives the ball to Norrie. Halfway line then for Melbourne. And here is Maru hard and strong down the left-hand side. And so Seeker, oh, it is a penalty to Melbourne. On the right, and on top. And it's late in the count. And it's an awful time to concede one, especially against the Melbourne team who love to camp themselves in the attacking zone. I think James Maloney, he'll be sick of the sight of Sikamanu by the end of the evening. There's Bromwich now for Melbourne. Put down about eight metres away. This emergency out on the left side for New Zealand's defence. Proctor plays the ball. Taken down by Lilliman and Hohaya. Smith comes back to the middle of the ground. He goes back, he looks for, he looks for Winnup. He gets it to Manu, Manu scores. Sikamanu scores! Sikamanu at the northern end has scored for Melbourne. Off the back of a penalty on the late tackle. He is such an influential player in this lineup, Sikamanu. Doesn't carry the profile of some of his teammates, but he is an absolute handful every time he takes the field, and he runs into a big gap here. It's very poor defence, and Manu burst his way through and under the posts. And we are back at Amy Park. And a crowd that is thrilled largely by the first try being scored by Melbourne by Sikamanu. And 4 0, about to become 6 0 off the boot of Cameron Smith and Sikamanu. Matthew Jenkins from TAB Sports Bet tells me $23.
is the official payment for Manu if you took him with TAB Sports Bet for first try scorer. Smith then will kick it into the northern end of the ground and he, he put a little pull on it. Average on sideline tonight. You have a look at some of the plays here from the class players. Cameron Smith first, the beautiful pass from Dummy Look at this, the wide and crisp pass on the Kino Ripley. And look at Gareth with him, the way he straightens the attack and the select passing to Manu. Beautiful play by class players. Look at that. Playing when he sees, straightens the attack. Second Manu, I think he's in for a big night. Manu, of course, has only played in the one grand final that Melbourne played in, and that was back in 2008 when beaten by Manly. In fact, they were embarrassed by Manly that year. We could well be revisiting that situation in eight days' time. Yeah, yeah. Clear in, Simon, wait for it, mate. We pointed it out last week that the Warriors' right side defence looked very brittle. The Tigers Please, didn't Simon go all that, that often, but obviously Craig Bellamy's picked it up because uh, they're very quick to get to Chris Nino and Young Maloney. Locke has got a very long run across to retrieve the kick. And that allowed the entire Melbourne team to come down the ground and they arrived at the 20 metre line. As Locke took the ball back just a couple of metres before the ball has gone to Taylor now. In fact, Tupo it is. Tupo. And here's Manu. It was one of these trademark runs of his. 45 metres out. That's one of the reasons that he's got his name, the beast. And that's Lewis Brown, who played the ball just into Melbourne Territory. Ohio dancing away and getting it to Maloney. And Maloney is just inside the 30 metre line. Held down there by Lowry. And now to Johnson, the halfback, and the kick has gone high, it's gone across towards Manu, he's allowed to take the ball, Taylor is with it, he got it away, Locke has got the ball now, he kicks, but it's gone off the shoulder of Lowry, it's come back down to Brown, and he's not restarted the tackle count, and it's now with Slater. And Slater is tackled. I thought, I thought one of the Melbourne players was struck with the ball actually playing at the ball. Yeah, I thought it was a, it was a, certainly a, a line ball call against the Warriors there. I mean, with a charge down, there is no knock on, but the tackle count is negated. I've got no doubts that Lowry was there for a purpose to block down the kick. So I think, I think the Warriors, I might be wrong, let's have a look at it. Well, he's involved there and it definitely hit him. That's six against you a lot. Oh, absolutely. I can't believe the referees haven't spotted that. Here's Proctor playing the ball. Now it's come away for Kronk, and Kronk sends it down towards... This is um, Inu with the ball now. Well, they did spot it, the referees, but they called play on. They, they deliberately called not played at by the Melbourne defender, Lowry, but it's a tough call as Mannering. The skipper outside his own 30. Toyota Cup went to the Warriors over the Bulldogs. If you follow the Bulldogs, you don't want to listen to the score. You've got to make the key. Kevin Proctor now by champion. Penalty going to New Zealand. 64 nil the Warriors won. They now take on the Cowboys in next Sunday's Toyota Cup Grand Final. You'll see that exclusively live on 9. And for New South Wales and Queensland viewers, our Grand Final Day coverage kicks off live from Homebush with the Sunday footy show at 11. Well, that was the first penalty for the Warriors tonight. Melbourne scored as a result of their first penalty as Lilliman, just outside the 20. Their best chance tonight, the Warriors in attacking position. So played by Jacob Lilliman, and it's away to Michael Luck now. They've seen a fair bit of each other in their, <clears throat> in their careers, pardon me. Played by Michael Luck, and now Ohio goes away to Maloney. Maloney back to Luck running in. There's a chance for Tupo. Tupo for the line. Good defence from Melbourne. And the Warriors now go away to Maloney and then they go away to Ohio and wide to Taylor. 
Taylor got it away. Johnson's got the ball. Sees an opportunity. Throws a big ball out to Manu Vatove. He's with the ball. Got it away. He's got Lewis Brown with him, and Brown is with the ball. Brown will play a 12 away from the line. Play back to Taylor. Taylor over to Johnson. Johnson puts the kick over. Here's Inu. Came backwards. Dived on by Toto. Try New Zealand. Try the Warriors. Well, it was brave. That check and points to the spot. It was very brave. It was an early kick. It was a fourth tackle kick. But Kristen Inu knew it was coming, and fortunately for the visitors, he missed it. Sean Johnson on the far side, Inu was already taken off and took Melbourne by surprise. Nielsen was slow to turn, and Inu, even if he did touch it, looked to have gone backwards, and Tupo, they answer in style with a try, their first visit this end. And welcome to our overseas audience. Billy Tupo. Uh, the moment you see Inu going into an aerial contest, you know that he's going to he's going to win the contest one way or another. He's going to get a, he's going to be the first to get a hand to it. Tupo, Bill Tupo, who has scored the try for New Zealand. Might live in the shadow of Manu Vatave, but he is a very, very accomplished footballer. He's only 21. I flew down with Gus today, and we we're going through the ages of the Warriors. They're a very young side. James Maloney, who played football up at, I think, a Rimba. He also started his NL NRL career here in Melbourne. So here's his kick for conversion, and he's got it. Off the steel work. I'm pretty sure that Chris Naninu leaps a little bit too early here and then at the last minute decides to bat it back. Let's have a look at the kick. He gets up very high but comes early and then decides just to knock it back because he knew he couldn't catch it. He played it, Naninu, deliberately in the path of his winger. And on the Keno replay, what's that? Flick back. See that? Little wrist action. Got it back into the field to play. Tupo was ready. Good try. Melbourne and Warriors level at six all. And that looks like Jacob Lilliman with the ball. Inside the 20 metre line, our Seagull friends are back with us again tonight. Packer. I thought Seagulls went to sleep at night. Why are Seagulls here in the night time? Well, they might be nocturnal Seagulls. Here is Locke. In from the back, and he saw a little hole, and he thought, I might get through there, but Melbourne closed it down. Play it back to Inu when Melbourne's ready. That's what they do best. Maloney away to Mannering. Mannering down low is Lowry, and Bear hugging over the top is Norrie. Here's Ohio. He tried to catch a penalty out of the markers. Five gone for New Zealand. Packers pass away. Maloney got a kick on it just in time. High, slate up, leaves it behind, that's it back, taken by Nielsen, knock on ordered, knock on against Melbourne. Now, I think this is the pressure of Chris Naninu being in this team and what the Storm have seen from him last week and already tonight. Because when Inu comes through, Billy Slater decides, well, I can't leave it for him, I've got to get above Inu. And that's forced him to make the big leap, then the knock on. And the Warriors force a turnover, which is really valuable at this end of the field. Well, he's always been excellent in the air, has Christian Inu, despite the fact he didn't even jump for that one. We saw him make a couple of clean breaks last week. And if we talk about... Now, you're going to see very different reactions from the coaches tonight. One demonstrative, one giving nothing away. Inu has scored 11 tries from 16 appearances. This is Johnson. Wrapped up by Slater in defence. Now for Brown. And the Warriors have got it to within five Jesse metres of the line. Square. Danger looming for Melbourne. Michael Luck with the right side play. Maloney will score. James Maloney scores for the Warriors. Happy. Well, the village of Arimba. And I think the pub's called the Tall Timbers. You'd be loving it. 
Yeah, it's a good pub. I go through it. Or past it, sorry, not through it, past it. Nothing going to be like that, perhaps. Well, I'll be high-fiving up there because he's, he's one of their favourite sons. And that ball from Michael Luck was almost as good as Daly Cherry Evans last night. In fact, it was probably better because it was so unexpected. And James Maloney, he got cuffed around the neck, but he takes it around so that he can make the conversion. James Maloney scores the try for Melbourne, uh, for the Warriors, I should say, so they, they get out to a 10-6 lead. And he will have the job of converting from right in front. Well, this is the start they wanted. If they get their confidence high, they're going to be hard to run down. Well, they couldn't have ordered a better start, really, the Warriors, barring Manu's try, but they are a team that can play razzle-dazzle, blow you off the park football if they have got their tails up. They can come off the carpet with razzle-dazzle football with nothing to lose by playing that way, and then when they get in front, they can absolutely be bedazzling. No, Maloney, that's Maloney. That's a good one. And here's Andrew John with no below. Yeah, to win the storm, you've got to be unorthodox on the Kuno replay. We've just seen the unorthodox. Michael Luck, a forward, ball playing and hitting a hole as a 5'8". Maloney. I don't think I've seen Michael Luck pass the ball this year. And by the look at that, I don't think James Maloney has either. I've just got to say, guys, the atmosphere down here, it's fever pitch. And I think the game is not going to disappoint. Yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it, man? That was a great ball from Michael Luck, and it was Sikamana who actually got caught out as Russell Packer brings it back. And Ray, I'd just like to make it clear, I don't spend a lot of time on pups. <laughs> don't worry about it. You worry too much. It used to be on the highway from Sydney to Newcastle. There was about 10 pubs, and I think I know where they all are, mainly because they had a TAB. Anyway, it's gone away now to Michael Luck and gone back on the inside for Manor. I've got no doubt that was a set play between the two boys to catch out Sikamanu because the reaction of Luck as soon as Maloney ran into the hole and the reaction of Maloney when he pointed back at him said, we got him. It was a set play. It's a beautiful ball. It's gone to Johnson now. Johnson, he stabs it down and Slater takes a low ball. Here comes Slater and Johnson got a shoulder on him and Ohio came in to clean him up. And then Billy... Looked like he might have tried to milk a penalty. Here's Quinn with the ball. 30 metres away from the Melbourne Go line. The oh. minor premiers trailing 12-6. This is Manu who got them their first try. Now Cameron Smith takes Quinn up down the left side, the blind side. Playing the ball eight metres into New Zealand's territory. It's gone over now to Woolno, Adam Woolno who will retire at the end of the year for the second time. Plays at 30 metres out from the line. And Kronk goes high, Slater's after it, Lock is going to fly. Came off, Lock went forward, try time is it? Champion gets it away, dancing is Duffy, and Duffy is taken. And that's the turnover. Gee, I thought if Matt Duffy had just headed to the right corner, the far corner, he might have scored. Billy Slater deliberately knocking that one back. That's why they had this play. But when he got the ball off Bo Chig and I thought he might have won the race to the corner. So the Warriors have used Manu and now they're using Tupo. Might remind you of a couple of blows called Wendell Sailor and Lottie Takiri. As Rapira loses the ball, Smith came up with it. It's found Nielsen out wide for Melbourne. And he'll play the ball. Eventually, just inside the 20 metre line. Cameron Smith was sweating on that offload there. As soon as Rapira hit the line, Smith ran behind him to get the knockdown. So this is Lowry who played the ball for Melbourne, just inside the 20 metre line, and away goes Cameron Smith, and he goes second man play. Trump decides to go. Taylor made the tackle with Brown. Slater dummy half. Smith goes away. Widop has got the ball. And Widop's able to stand. I thought he would deliver. But he eventually goes down under the tackle of Mannering. Here's Smith looking at the uprights, giving it back to Norrie. And Brian Norrie will play the ball. 
Couple meters out, tackle five for Melbourne. And uh, they go deep back to their 5 8 winner. Oh, he put a little kick in. And it was taken by Inu. Inu's dancing his way down to the 30 meter line. That was a set play from the Melbourne Storm and brilliantly read by the Warriors. They've done their homework. That was the dummy kick for Slater and then throw it out the back. Watch how Slater goes through to look to chase the kick. Riddock comes around the back and the Warriors were right waiting for him. Well read. That's how they scored against St George Illawarra here in the, the later rounds of the competition. That pass was inviting the intercept, but here's Brown running around Taylor, giving it to Vartave, and he's got the ball back now to Jeremiah. Jeremiah comes across the ground, throwing dummy after dummy before Nielsen brings him down. On the Melbourne 30 metre line, Michael Luck gets it on. Lilliman is with it. Lilliman will play it on five and last. And they're right on the 20 metre line, so they'll put it up. And after it will be Inu and Tupo. And Melbourne marking it in goal. Anthony Quinn. Yeah, the Melbourne Storm aren't quite comfortable when the Warriors start to string some passes together, particularly if they get second phase. Melbourne just like you to come at them so they can wrestle you and slow it down, but. When they've got to chase you, they look a little bit raggedy. Champion playing the ball and uh, Duffy trying to break away from that tackle. He is able to get a ball away down on the ground. It's with Woolno. And Mannering cleans him up with some help there from Lilliman. So 12-6 in favour of uh, the New Zealand Warriors with Ryan Hinchcliffe out there now. Hinchcliffe played in all but one of the matches this year for Melbourne 12 run-ons and the rest of course coming from the bench as Kronk goes very high Vartave oh he's got he hasn't got a grab at it batted down by Proctor it's with Duffy and Duffy is taken down by Locke and Luck Luck and Lock. now here is Loud another hill throw him in as well so now from Duffy, it's come over to Woolno, and Woolno taking the ball to the centre of the ground. They're five metres out, Melbourne. Smith gives it on. Slater's with the ball. He dances. He gets it over. Manu can't take it. Melbourne with the ball, though. Hanging on. Luckily. Now Slater gets it away. It's gone bouncing on to Smith, and then he dummies. Keeps going. Gets the ball to Proctor. Proctor shows it. Goes himself. And Proctor's still standing and going. But he's put down eventually. Exciting stuff. Strong effort by Proctor. Now Smith, he looks for a chance. They're underneath him. They tell him to play the ball. And he plays it looking at the sideline, really. As the ball comes from Crump. Oh, well read Maloney. Maloney breaks into the backfield. They're after him now. Widdop will get him and bring him down, but won't hold him. Goes in and puts a second tackle on him now. Brilliant footy. So now Tupo comes around. He'll play the ball 35 metres out from the line. They were just defending their own line and now they're, they're given a chance. This is the third tackle. With Rapira to play the ball. Saladi Mateo's on the field. And that represents more danger. Here's Matalino. He's out there as well. They can both offload, Matteo particularly, we all know that. Now Johnson, that is Matteo, and he's put down 12 metres away from the Melbourne line. Matteo's hurt. Mm. Is there some thought that there's an illegality here? I didn't see anything. Well, he's got a bleeding nose, so uh, something's happened. Or he got a finger in the eye, one or the other. It was so important at the other end for the Warriors to defend that. The last time they were up against consecutive sets, they were unable to do so, and Melbourne scored. And they, now he's just turned around into the, the upper arm of Kevin Proctor, nothing illegal there. Can't see a penalty there. We are going live into Melbourne. There will be people who don't watch the NRL every week. When we talk about second phase, we're talking about offloading in tackles, keeping the football alive. And that's what the Warriors do maybe better than anyone. The Warriors on the last tackle, they go up and in Inu, might have got pushed out of the way, Locke has got the ball, but Melbourne have got him tied up. 
Yeah, he was under that. He knew. And I thought a Storm player gave him a real shove in the back there. They tend to look at defenders getting knocked down. Bang, knocked him out of the way. I guess he was going for the ball. And Locke very nearly got the second grab. Good footy from both sides. Exciting stuff. 12 metres out then from the Melbourne line with Lowry. Trying to clear the danger zone. He played in the centre of the ground. Smith across the face of Hitch to the front. And now the champion. Champion's gone through and he's pulled out. He hits the ground heavily. Tackled by Mateo. The ball has come loose, so the Warriors are celebrating. Well, let's flow in the first 26 minutes. As I mentioned earlier, it. The defence has been fantastic, really physical and tough. No champion running into a hole there, ran a good line outside in, but Matteo in making the tackle forced the mistake. I don't want to labour the point, Ravitz, but these seagulls are driving me insane. They're just everywhere. Get off the field. Ball in. Ball in. Out. I think they put an end to a race meeting at Sandown one day. It might have been the same flock of seagulls. Here's Brown, wait, wait. playing it in the middle of the ground, 30 metres away. Here's Rapira now. And Sam Rapira, he's a tough man, but he's lost the ball. Well, that's the second time he's he's dumped the ball. Whether it was helped out or not, I don't know, but I can assure you that Rapira's been twice involved in dumping the ball straight after tonight's grand final qualifier, Rugby World Cup. Tournament favourites, New Zealand up against France. Big time football. Plenty of it on the home of Sport Channel 9. Second, the replay there, you saw it was the hand of Cameron Smith knocking the ball out of the grasp of Sam Rapira. But you need to have better ball security. Melbourne dodged a bullet there with Nielsen taking the ball from the scrum wing. In front of a, almost a packed stadium here. I, I, you can almost count the vacant seats. So I, if it's a capacity of 27,000. If it's a capacity stadium of 27,000, they're in the 26,000 bracket here tonight. As it goes away to Kronk and they've gone back to Slater and Slater is taken 40 metres out from his own line. Cameron Smith, no look away to Wulno and he's hit there by Matalina. Didn't seem to worry Wulno and he looked up and he saw he was confronted then by Rapira. Storm are playing the ball very quickly. The Warriors can't last if they don't get in the wrestle with them. Well, they've got to tackle them in the numbers that they tackle everybody else in and use up the available time given by the referee. Here's Manu. Oh, oh, Manu's in one of those moods tonight. Well, the Seagulls got in his way, Ramos. They got in his line of sight, the Seagulls. Yeah, but they weren't there a fortnight ago when he had a similar problem. He actually made a, a good late decision there because I think if he'd have tried to catch it, he'd have made a mistake. He pulls out of it. Look at the Seagull. It's in his way. Andrew, give me a seagull update, would you? Well, Where are they from? What are they doing here? I don't know. I don't know, Brabs. But apparently last night at the AFL, they had two eagles in cages on top of the, the, the MCG grandstands to stop the seagulls the, the seagulls coming in. I understand not. Desi Hazel put his hand up, but they knocked him back. <laughs> Maloney will play the ball, but there's a knock on in there. He knocked it into the arm of the defender there, did James Maloney. He doesn't like the call. Oh dear. So this scrum will pack about 10 metres Melbourne side of halfway, just repeating the score 12 6 in favour of Melbourne. And possession. In favour of uh, the, the Warriors, I should say, with two tries to run. Possession evenly shared. In the opening well, half hour up. here, 11th from 13 for the Storm, the Warriors 10 from 14. Just one extra error there. Only the, the two penalties awarded, one each. Scrum win down the shorter side with Gareth Widdop. Widdop to play the ball near the halfway line. Nielsen is the dummy half runner. And he's straightened it up himself and taken by Matalino and Mannering. So just repeating, it's the Auckland or New Zealand Warriors leading by six points as we come to the half hour mark in the first half of the game the match live through GTV tonight and Proctor got a nice pass well when I say that it was at exactly the right time might have been a bit down low for him 
It's a good play, this fellow Proctor. He plays it back, and Smith it is, gives the pass away. And Kemp got it out to Champion. And Champion will play the ball. So play by Bo Champion. And now it's with Cooper Croft, and he goes across. He's looking for Anthony Quinn, and oh, Inu! Inu up above the pack, and they get a penalty. Yeah, tackled in the air. It was a super take from Inu, because the ball came down in an awkward way to him. Had to get his hands to accommodate it. He held on, but was tackled by Anthony Quinn in the air. Yeah, but that's also great play and great coaching from the Warriors, because Inu lined up on the wing, specifically for that cross-field kick. As soon as he got to tackle five, and they were on the long side, Tupo and Inu swapped positions, and Inu knew that the winger would be targeted with the kick and come up with the grab. Both sides are really on their game. They, they know what they're doing. So Jeremiah it is that takes the tap. And Madeline now takes it towards the middle of the ground. He's about 33 metres out from his own line. I love this kick. Adelino it was who played the ball. Michael Luck with the head bandage and back to the balding Sam Rapira. Playing it back to Jeremiah. Takes Michael Luck with him. And Luck is met then by the shoulder of Proctor. Hinchcliffe coming in as a second tackle. And away goes Jeremiah. Gets it on to Maloney. Maloney away to Mannering. And Mannering will play the ball 30 metres away. Melbourne again on defence. Jeremiah to Maloney and inside ball. Mannering's with it, but nothing doing at the moment. They might have just lost their pattern there for a moment. Auckland. Now it's gone on for Johnson and Johnson. He puts a kick up and it's gone towards Inu's side of the ground. They let it bounce this time. Tupo knocked it forward. It's now with Widdock being five eighths the man for Melbourne. And he'll play the ball ten away from his own line. Nielsen to Lowry, a little juggle from Lowry, and then he's taken by three defenders for the Warriors, including Mannering, Matalino, and Jeremiah. Slater passes, Woolno runs, and he's met up the top by Matalino. That's far better for the Warriors. So here's the ball now finding Cronk, and out wide on the right is Proctor. He's a, he's a busy Melbourne player tonight, Proctor. He's been busy all season, Ray. He's the only Melbourne player to have played in every game. Cronk it is that finds Champion this time. And Michael Luck making the tackle on Champion. Champion probably making it look half dangerous, but it was more him than the tackle. Now Manu with a nice fend, and then he, he steps up to halfway before Inu puts him away. Nielsen lost the pass over. It floats down to Cronk, and Cronk puts a kick in. It's going to bounce and find the line. Over on the eastern side, we'll take a break at 12-6. It's the Warriors leading. Come back, the final football continues out of Melbourne tonight. With the winner of this going through to the grand final tomorrow week at ANZ Stadium, the Olympic Stadium, where Pira is with the ball. Sea Eagles will play the winner of tonight. At the moment, it's the New Zealand Warriors with Lewis Brown taking it up to halfway. They're leading 12-6 uh, to score. Manu got the first try at the fifth minute of the game. Tupo at the 12th minute and then Maloney at the 16th minute. So tries came quickly for New Zealand and here's Matteo, Maloney and then Mannering. No look, might have gone forward, it did. Wow. That was such beautiful football and very nearly perfectly executed. They really jammed the Melbourne Storm defence up in close to the play the ball with some short passing. Watch this. Look at all the numbers on the inside and that jams the defence in. Now they try to get it with quick hands. One more, one more, but that pass just floats forward. Otherwise, they had the, the comfortable overlap. Nice footy. Yeah, Dane Nielsen, he was, he was a man drawn in as familiar face, certainly south of the border, Mick Malthouse. Wasn't he put through the ringer yesterday with his side, Collingwood, in hand late against Hawthorne. Oh, straight 
shot the ball away. And Bo Campion, he's sprinting away. Locks after him, but he beats Locke to the line. He's got through a couple of times on that right-hand side. And Bo Champion, once he saw open space, there was no Warriors defender within Cooey and Lynch. Kevin Locke is very, very quick, but Bo Champion showed great speed. Let's have a look. It's a, a brilliant ball. Is that Billy Slater up at 5'8"? Yeah, it was. A wonderful pass. It looked like he was going to go second man or, or wide, but he hit Champion, who again ran a great line and caught out. The Warriors defence, Lewis Brown in no man's land, could only throw his arm out. By that stage, Champion was away. Well, I think Lewis Brown was worried that Mateo was standing out of the scrum in the back line. Now, I know a lot of teams stand their forwards in the back line of scrums. He's riding it home there, Craig. <laughs> He's going to burst a boiler, Craig, one night. Fair dinkum. But I, I, think that, I think that Lewis Brown got nervous that Mateo might have been caught out for speed, so he came in, and that's what created the gap for champion. Lovely ball for him. Mentioned earlier, you get two very different reactions from the coaches when we go up to their boxes during the course of the evening. And Craig Bellamy, he was uh, he was at Flemington. He was he was riding the favourite home. Although he mightn't have been the favourite bow champion with Kevin Locke in pursuit. Oh, he had a big lead. A big, big lead. So Cameron Smith to level the score. And we're not that far from half time. About three minutes away. Smith it is that converts the try. Scored by Bo Champion. And laid on beautifully by Billy Slater. Andrew John sideline. Yeah, Rabs. It's just an incredible speed of Slater that makes Lewis Brown turn in on the Kuno replay. He skipped across Valetti Mateo. It doesn't matter which angle Billy Slater's running in, whether it's in a straight line or a cross field, he's lightning quick. And this man on screen, Tony hit a hole, bone champion. Puts the ears back. What a second half we've got, boys. I can't wait. You people on the Gold Coast, that's what you're getting. Playing alongside Jamal Idris next year. Some kind of a centre combination. Now Jamin Lowe. 20 metres out from their own line, Melbourne. Now they go nose and nose. Hinchcliffe is with it. Cameron Smith. Again, Jamin Lowe. Led the comp for a total of 15 weeks this year, did Melbourne. Hinchcliffe playing the ball close to halfway. Brock is Slater's with him, and he got a kick on it before it hit the ground. It's no knock on, cleaned up by Bartovay. The heel plate, well, hang on a second, he's called it, he's called it back. He's saying he knocked it on, and there was no advantage here. Tony Archie must have ruled there's a knock on here from... Uh, well... I thought he got a kick on it before it hit the ground, but obviously he didn't. That's oh, your favourite rule too, isn't it? No, it's not. It is. You love that one where they knock it on Come and back kick on. it. Well, I'm just trying to explain the rules, Gus. Is there something wrong with that? No, but you love it. You love it when they happen. I don't love it. I, I like to be able to explain the rules to audiences. That's what I like to do. You wait for that to happen. You've got me having a love affair with the, love affair with the rule book. Anyway. Melbourne viewers will think we don't like each other, so let's try and let's try and love each other a little bit. He's Madeline. He was reading the rule book on the plane coming down. 35 out from the go on tonight. From the line. No, I was. Cameron. I was. And here is Mateo. It's a one on. No, it's not a one on one steal. There's a second man in the tackle. Well, so let me explain that to you. If there are two in the tackle and the ball is stolen, then the referee can penalise if he feels it was stolen. But one on one, you can do whatever you like. James Maloney couldn't post a point to the post quick enough here to hopefully put his side in front. Fred Mateo certainly being tackled there by both Cooper Cronk and Cameron Smith. And so Kevin Proctor. The last time I'm going to sit on the plane with you. You're a dead set give up, you are. So 
So James Maloney, who's been under the spotlight in the first half. 28 metres out. He's almost in centre field. And he can take the Warriors to half-time with a two-point lead. He strikes it. The touches haven't moved. The flags go up. So the New Zealand Warriors at half-time lead Melbourne by two. It is 14 plays 12. 40 minutes of the second NRL Grand Final qualifier to come. Well, Chris Nadinu has been flying high, and so has Billy Slater, and so has Kevin Locke. And so too are the Seagulls. We welcome you back by a super slow-mo seagull in flight at Amy Park. Second half about to get underway. New Zealand leading by two. Did you know the Queensland Cup Grand Final this year is the Seagulls versus the Seagulls? So it's the year of the Seagull. Tweethead Seagulls versus Winner Manly nice. Seagulls. Weren't Manly once upon a time called the Seagulls? Years ago, before they became the Sea Eagles? Well, that shot there looked a bit like Jonathan Livingston, but I guess it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Looking at some of the statistics, Melbourne, when they've... Uh, or should I say New Zealand, when they've led at half-time, they've uh, got home on eight occasions. Eight times when they've led at half time, they've got home, they've been in front of 12 occasions. Whereas Melbourne's second half in more recent times have provided very few points. In fact, I think in their last four or five games, they've only had about, I think they've scored about 10 points in the last four games in the second half. I'm talking. Well, they've got to get it right now because the loser heads to the cricket season, the winner goes to the grand final. So the kickoff is there for the second half off the boot of Cameron, and it's come back with Sam Rapira strong. And he'll play the ball on the 20 Come metre line. For the New Zealand Warriors as it goes away now for Matalino, and he gets it just beyond the 20 metre point. Matalino then to play the ball right on the 30 metre line. Down his own end of the park, naturally enough, and that's Matteo. Taken to ground by Melbourne, Proctor and Champion making the tackle. Now for Michael Luck, and he goes short away to Mannering. And Mannering will play the ball short of halfway by about eight metres. That's the fourth tackle. And now to the boot of Johnson, the halfback. And he puts it down, straight down the throat of Billy Slater, as a matter of fact. And Slater comes back, looks for a gap, but there isn't a gap. And he takes the tackle on the 30 metre line. So Melbourne... Trailing by two as we go into the opening exchanges of the second half. That's Lowry out to the 40 metre line. Telecast going pretty much around the globe into the rugby league parts of the world. The United Kingdom taking it. It's going into America and of course across to New Zealand. And tonight live into Melbourne as this ball finds the line just outside the 10. We'll see a scrum go down off the boot of Cooper Cronk, the number seven for Melbourne. You can't hear what's going on in the dressing room at half time, but a, a lot of Craig Bellamy's gestations were with the hand pointing directly forward, wanting players to straighten up the attack and go directly at the Warriors defenders so they can create space on the outside for Billy Slater and, and these speed men. So I think we'll see a relentless advantage line assault here from the Melbourne Storm as they try to dominate the Warriors territorially. You can see Craig Bellamy, he was hoping that ball would stay in. He didn't want it to go dead and give the, the restart to the Warriors. And they have to play it and the tackle made on them as Manu Vatavay takes it outside the 20 and as always, Lewis Brown, the next man to take it after his play the ball. Play back to Jeremiah, the dummy half, and the runner is Rapira. Sam Rapira playing it just outside the 40 metre line, and now it's with Matteo, and he pokes his nose through and immediately starts looking for runners around him. But it seemed on that occasion that New Zealand was setting up for this play rather than worrying about the, the thought or the fact that Matteo was there with the gap already created, looking to unload. And here's Johnson putting a kick, towering down towards Duffy, and Duffy leaves the field of play and finishes back in the end goal. So it's play on, Melbourne. 
five metres out from their own line. His champion, who scored that 70 metre try, and he has his left snapped from under him by luck. And Matalino over the top. Here's Slater now out to the middle of the 20 metre line, taken by Rapira. And uh, this is Anthony Quinn taking just a couple of paces before he's also hammered by New Zealand. And they're 20 metres out. Now they're 25 metres out, and they've used five. So the Warriors should get the ball back in reasonable position here as it goes down off the boot of Cameron Smith. They'll put a good chase on it, but Locke is going to be tackled five metres short of halfway. And you'd love to come up with the ball on tackle one on every set. Oh, Martin ran into Jamin Lowe and Proctor. And they actually left a dent on Manu, I think. Now look at Mateo. Got it away to Locke. And Locke will play the ball. He decided to follow Mateo. It's a good idea. Jeremiah's with it now. Held by Jamin Lowe. Played back for Johnson. Johnson to Maloney. Off his right foot. And he tries to burrow through, but Hinchcliffe makes the tackle. 15 metres out from the line. Here it is with Johnson. Short to Mateo. Double pumps. Flick passes back to Johnson. He puts a kick in. Slater has to make it dead. Now, this is two footballers. These two players do not fall into the category of mechanical or predictable. Johnson and Mateo. It's a fifth tackle. Everyone just expects hey, the crossfield kick or the grubber Stay kick. Behind. But a little bit of footwork, a pass, and a double around to get it back. And then a little grubber kick. That's two footballers. Not athletes, not robots. Just two blokes playing the line, the at the line, line and trying to get a result. And coaches get nervous about Stay that. Behind. Smith with the line drop out. It's not his best kick. It's come down inside the 40 metre line. Here's Rapira winding it up. Rapira will play the ball. Just outside the 20 metre line on the first tackle. Now Madalino makes another dent. 12 metres out. Second tackle. Jeremiah has a look. Here's Luck with the ball. Michael Luck pulled down three metres out. Three tackles left on the set. It's gone to Johnson. He goes back to Locke. Locke will get to the line, will he? No, he's short. Now, played by Locke, and it's gone Mateo to Johnson. Johnson, he stepped twice on his right foot. He's still going. He runs a semicircle. He then gets the ball away, taken by Inu. Inu then comes back and is tackled on the 10 metre line. <laughs> Five tackles gone for the Warriors. It's come from Johnson, gone away to Maloney. He's gone out looking for Manu. Up they go, it came off Duffy, went backwards. And taken by Kronk for Melbourne. Yeah, he's been hurt, Matt Duffy, in that collision as Billy Slater tries to get out of dummy half. Now it's Jamin Lowe taking it out. Some sparkling attack there from the Warriors, but resolute defence from the Melbourne Storm and a very awkward landing there for Matt Duffy. Now Nielsen. Well, Rabbits, I think the big three for Melbourne here have got to get into the game. We, we haven't seen much from Cameron Smith at all out of Dunning Hart. He hasn't probed all that much. He and Slater haven't linked up at all. Cooper Cronk's got to get his hands on the ball. I don't know if they're going to be able to grind this home. Cronk's kick has given the ball back to uh, the Warriors again on their own 40. They're going to be tackled on one on the halfway line. Well, again, Ray, the defence held them to just 25 metres out from their own line. They're getting the ball back, Peter, in wonderful field position. Here's Chris Naninu, he's able to pop it back. And it's with Matalino, and Matalino takes it up to the 40 metre line. They're running with confidence, New Zealand. It's gone from Jeremiah, gone to Johnson. Turns it in for Michael Luck, and the ball goes to ground. Picked up by Jeremiah, and the referee says, play on. Melbourne crowd don't like the decision. Now it's with Maloney, back for Mannering, and Mannering takes it 23 metres out from the line. 14-12 in favour of the Warriors. Jeremiah back to Johnson, Johnson back to Locke. Locke throws a long pass, looking for Manu Vatave. Well, they've called the pass forward, I'm not sure about that, but Manu was probably a million to one to catch that. And 
These probing little runs from the little men around the play the ball area are driving Melbourne insane. They're doing a really good job to keep coming up with the ball. Here's the pass here. Lock right across. Manu just lets it sail into touch. And you saw the contentious call. The Melbourne crowd didn't like it. The referee ruled that it came off the leg of Aaron Heremeyer and he didn't get a hand to it. Wait for it. But they haven't taken Wait advantage of Warriors of dominating this first eight and a half minutes against the Melbourne Storm. That can hurt you later on. Duffy to play the ball. 20 metres out from his own line. This is Sikamanu. Ashton Kutcher stole the show and Australia loved it. Now find out what happens next. Nine brand new two and a half men. Tuesday at half past eight around the nation. He was very good. Kutcher? Yeah, he's very good. Very yeah. dry, but very good. Here's Henchcliffe with the ball now. I'm just wondering what position he played. And when I got to the bottom of reading the promo, I realised it was two and a half men that he's in. I thought he's playing for Melbourne for a moment. Here's Clark with a little double pump and finding Proctor. Proctor will play the ball 39 metres away from the Warriors line and Cron gets a kick in, the tackle on him, it was okay I think from Jeremiah and Lock it is that comes back with the ball for the Warriors and they put numbers in the tackle again. Yeah, he got some heavy contact there going into Cameron Smith as he came out the other side of the tackle but fortunately he's up, played it, Bill Tupo now with the football. A clutch in his jaw there, the fullback Kevin Lock. Brown gives it away for Manu Vadave, and he'll play the ball. the ball. And there's the contact, and he got the elbow of Cameron Smith right, right on the jawbone. Oh, Brown with the ball, close to halfway. 14 12 in favour of the New Zealand Warriors as Rafira charges ahead. The Storm defenders are really ganging up on Manu Vadave. The minute they dummy to Manu Vadave on one of those plays, they're going to find space. Now, Tupo got a long pass from Maloney, and then he puts a kick in that will go dead. And it will come back to the 20 for the restart. Here yeah, in their last four second halves, Melbourne have scored only 10 points. None against uh, the Dragons, four against the Eagles, four against the Roosters, and two against the Knights. Having said that, they've held teams 11 times scoreless against them in the second half. Duffy played the ball, Nielsen tried to get rid of Jeremiah, but he's taken there with Maloney's assistance. They're back on their 40-meter line in Melbourne. It's a long time since they've seen the opposition half of the field. So played by Quinn, and now to Kronk, and he puts a kick away, shooting it down into the 10-meter zone. And Locke is back there, he looks around and finds Champion and Duffy are there waiting for him. And that's the result Craig Bellamy was looking for in the, the last kick from Cooper Conk down that way, the one that found touch. And now Melbourne will muscle up in defence and leading the way, the little halfback Cooper Conk, unable to put Tupé to the ground. So Manu Valdeve. As Peter just pointed out, they are putting a lot of defensive numbers on him. And uh, Christian Inu is now taken. 23 metres out from their line. Quick play the ball by the Warriors. Good ground made by Brown. Lewis Brown, there's the Warriors. Tackled five times in the opposition 20, up against zero. Which uh, endorses what I said earlier about Melbourne. Here's Slater with a long run. Well, there was a crazy chase from Russell Packer. He led the way. And one-on-one -on -one with Billy Slater was never, ever going to make the tackle. And a staggered defence is what Billy Slater lives for. Out with Bromwich. And he's able to pop the ball down. He got it away to Quinn. And Anthony Quinn to play it. Back to Cameron Smith. They put a quick play the ball on. Nielsen's with the ball. It's out 30 metres out from the line now. Well, Cronk and Slater are going to get themselves into the game. They've got to combine to get a try here. Smith goes to Cronk and Cronk goes back. He finds Slater. Slater's added a peel of back. It's gone to Smith, gone to Cronk. He comes across towards Proctor. Proctor's got the ball now. Gets away from one. Gets away from a second. And he's flung down by a third. Pulled down by Mateo and Wiles. Five tackles, Melbourne. It's gone to Cronk. Right foot kick. And uh, they bat it back. Melbourne might get the ball back here. And it comes down. It's loose. It stacks on the mill. 
and he gives six more to Melbourne. Play by Hinchcliffe. Now Melbourne's got a good chance. Here's Bromwich. There's the line. Two metres in front of them. And it's Smith away. And tackled is the number 10 for Melbourne. Brian Norrie played and spun away by Smith. The run around with Hinchcliffe. He goes away to Mando. Mando looking for number two. Again, the Warriors defence solid. Play by Manu. Smith goes back. Gives it to Cronk. Cronk puts a little kick in. It might be too deep. It is. Wow. It's a sad ending, really, for Melbourne. He doesn't do that very often. That was a rush of blood, a very rare rush of blood from Wait. Cooper Cronk. And the, the Melbourne Ace Storm had the Warriors it. measure there. And that'll come as a great relief to the Warriors. Yeah. Cronk makes that error. That's Come rare. Move. And Craig Bellamy said, oh. what the gosh was that? Or well, words to the effect. Packer taking it out to his oh. own 40. In fact, it's Lewis Brown. It's Felidi Matteo again, up to the halfway line. Cameron now. Plays it right in the centre of the ground. Madalino goes away short to Maloney. Oh. And Widop was there waiting for him to get the ball. Now it comes to Johnson. Johnson back to Packer. And Packer is standing up in this tackle. Oh, Melbourne won't mind oh, that. The now they put him to come ground. Back, come back. All taking time, giving them a chance to set their defensive line. Johnson kicks very high. Coming through his inner. Up they go. And Anthony Quinn wins oh, yeah, the oh, jump. Yeah. Nice catch. Now Slater passes quickly to Nielsen. Nielsen just inside the 20 metre line. Quinn a dummy half, a run for him. And uh, jumping out from second marker to make the tackle is Manuel. So Slater out in front of Widow. He did well to take that ball. The 5 8. And now for Bromwich. And Bromwich will play the ball just inside. His own 30 metre line, that's tackle five. And Cronk it is that gets the kick away down the ground. Had to hurry it, but even this will be satisfactory to be tackled on tackle one. When they get hold of Locke, but Locke has turned on the afterburners. It's gone down the ground and then it finds touch. Uh, the exuberance of youth. He really backed himself there but ended up cornered against the sideline, had to come up with a kick. Look at this, little dummy. Yeah, come on, mate, you and me, let's go, let's go. And he finds he's probably made the wrong decision, then had to kick in field and surrenders possession meekly. That's about as much as a reaction as you'll get from that coach. You see right there. Yeah, if he scores a try there, Kevin Locke, he's a genius. And if he doesn't, it's a pretty poor play. Well, that's what he was trying to do, he was trying to score. Sixteen minutes gone in the second half. And no change to the halftime score. Good game, Roberts. It is a good game and it's stay there, James, stay there. Sitting, chilling and throwing. At the moment. You'd think that New Zealand have got the better of it at the moment. They're certainly playing the game down Melbourne's end. Yep, Manu got, will play it. Got no points out of it, Ray. That's the big thing. That's the way, Peter. Norrie will play the ball, bumping his way up towards halfway. It's gone to Hinchcliffe, and then he goes back to Cronk, and Cronk back to Slater. He got a ball away, champion has taken. He loses the ball, and he's ordered to knock on. Well, Manu Vatuve nearly put Burnley Slater into Richmond. He came off his wing, reading the play that it was coming out the back to Slater, and had he connected, well, I hate to think where Billy would have ended up. He would have gone through the post at the MCG. Well, Ray, Gus could actually be talking about the Richmond outside of Sydney. Because he he went in. We saw him do it last week very effectively as well. And Billy Slade, he saw him coming very, very late. <laughs> oh, dear. The Warriors can't defend Just get the 14 ball points. Now. 
and that's why not having scored at the moment is a concern for them, although Maloney makes good metres. Now they've got to score again in this game once, maybe twice, the Warriors to win. Storm need more than 12 too, Peter. Yeah, well, I, I think they get another shot down the other end. We won't see a, an error like we saw from Cooper Cronkin kicking it down. He's packing now. Playing the ball outside the 30 metre line. Running with the ball is Lilliman. Jacob Lilliman plays it, and it's uh, Heremeyer who goes away. Got it back to Michael Lux. Spins out of a tackle. It's gone back there to Lilliman. And Lilliman is eight metres out from the uprights at the northern end of Amy Park. Five tackles gone for the Warriors. Right side play. Maloney, well, he rolled it straight into the, the grasp of Widop, who gets out of his tackle and then is taken down by Mannery. It's not such a bad play, though. That, that, that looked good, Reed, but at least they didn't concede a 20 metre tap. And it's not a bad place to give the ball back to your opposition. Played by Quinn, tackled by Maloney. This is Vaya. He's on the park now, the number 21 from Melbourne. So now the coach has used all his replacements, as has, of course, Ivan Cleary for the Warriors. This is Bromwich. And he's hit hard by Packer and down low by Lilliman. Played by Bromwich, and now it's gone to the boot of Kronk. He's kicked from outside the 40. And this ball spinning around and finishing on the 20-metre line. And Tupo it is that gets it back to the 30. And Maloney is back there to go. Acting half at his Vandervey. And every time he runs the ball, there's a groan goes up from the crowd. As Johnson turns it in for Mateo now. Mateo played the ball right on the halfway line. Across to Lilliman to go through the middle. Oh, he's a good forward, this bloke. Cheat G origin football improves some players, and he's an example. Now Michael Luck. Almost to the 30-metre line. They've used up five. So the kick is coming. And Maloney it is that provides that kick. Millie took a seagull out with it, and up goes Slater. It's gone back. Slater. They're in the end goal. They're going to get it back and they won't. It's line dropout time. And it's a super kick, James Maloney. And you see Billy Slater, he wasn't sure whether Matt Duffy was going to contest it or not. And in the end, he had to make a late decision to go for it himself. The, the, the kick was beautifully placed in between both men. And the height of it gave the chasers time to get through. And they were a little bit lucky that the ball went back and Cooper Cronk and Anthony yeah, Quinn had got the back run, behind the football. Time to run. <laughs> wait, wait, Jesse. The drop out again from Cameron is not good. And Locke wasted time really looking for a runner to take it back. Eventually Packer was there. And he's passed. Yeah, they'll, they'll give the football back to Russell Packer. Right, wait there. Which is good. Wait there. Packer the way it should be. Called hell, pass was thrown. It was a simultaneous call, and that's the way the referees told us it would be this year. If that be the case, they'll give, a, give the ball back to the man to play it. Now it's going to Johnson, Johnson to Mateo. And Mateo's on the 10-metre line. Trouble for Melbourne. It's gone away to Johnson. Johnson goes off his left foot, now his right foot. Looks behind, looks to flick pass. Four tackles gone. Here's Hayra Meyer. And oh, he ran around behind Luck. Oh, too lucky to get away with that one. Yeah, it should be a tenner. So Johnson, and the last. The kick goes in. Duffy will be trapped, will he? Well, he might have run around behind Slater in his own end goal, but he got it back into the field of play. Well, there's a bit of tip for tap there. Now Slater. Almost out to the 20 metre line. Champion. Ooh, oh, that's wrong, right that defence. Maloney and Mannering. Yes, exactly. Champion slammed into the ground. Nielsen. Well, the Storm are going to have to start passing the ball in their own half of the field because all this one-out stuff is really suiting the Warriors. They've got to string some passes together to get it up the other end. So, Widdop on the 40-metre line now. 
What happened to Anthony Quinn over on the far side of the ground? He has gone down. He wasn't involved in the play. Here's Locke. There's Quinn on the ground for Melbourne. Did something happen in back play? I'm not sure. That's Tupo with the ball. Seagull might have hit him. Well, we think he's actually gone into a Warriors play, but we don't know. There was infringement. All the trainers very concerned. Let's have a look. Anthony Quinn, it's Russell Packer, who drops the shoulder into his back. Here's Lillyman. Oh, he's up now. And out on his wing, Quinn, despite the attention of the trainer. Hemmermeyer, down the middle of the ground. Killed by Vaya. He looks likely Hemmermeyer. They'll want to watch him. Now from Locke, to the right side for Maloney. He puts it down towards Quinn and Slater. It should go dead. And it does. There he's going up. Slater scurries back to the 20 metre line. Well, I said I thought Melbourne could score if they get to the other end. They're into the final quarter of this game. They might not get to the other end if the trend continues as Adam Wilmer hits it forward. Well, they've got to pass the ball, Peter. They're just running one out. I really think that. You know, Slater, Kronk and Cameron Smith have really got to start to combine. Here's Manu, taken over there by Inu. The workers have done their job. The big guns have got to come forward now. Hinchcliffe. Seven out of the ten interchanges used by both coaches, Craig Bellamy and Ivan Cleary. And the Kronk has found the line 15 metres away from the Warriors' try line. It's 14-12, the Warriors, as we take a break. Well, the attendance is well and truly a, a ground record. In fact, if they told me it was 27 capacity, they've got 1,800... 1,580 too many people in here. Welcome back to finals football and look at the crowd. 28,580. So the capacity here is more like 29,000, not 27 like I was told. That is a record crowd for Amy Park. It's only a very young crowd. It's the biggest crowd attracted by these two and the biggest rugby league crowd ever at this new rectangular stadium in Melbourne. Jeremiah with the ball. ball. He's 38 metres out line. from the Jordan Melbourne line. Lincoln. Played by Jeremiah to Rapira to Maloney, and Maloney goes over to Mannering. And they're looking Jordan confident, Jordan the Warriors. Oh, they're doing everything right. They're dominating the, the middle third of the field. Last tackle now, Sean Johnson. Again, the responsibility of the kick, and it's aimed towards Matt Duffy. Duffy, oh, Melbourne ran a bit of a block with Champion, but... That He's held up. He's wow. Held up in goal. Got a hand over out here. Well, that's outstanding defence. Great work from Manu, who gets up and gets the ball. Gee, they're good at this, aren't they? Holding the ball up and not letting players score. Brilliant stuff. That that just might win them a game. That save right there. It's Brian Norrie. Taking it out, and Taylor in 17 makes the tackle with the help of Rapira and Lilliman. Now it's gone away to Wilmo, and he runs the play, and it's taken. He's taken in defence by Jeremiah and Mateo. Mattering in the tackle as well. Wilmo plays it. Smith gives the ball back to Slater. Slater comes to Champion. Champion to the halfway line. Gave the ball to Duffy, and Duffy is hit there by Brown. So Melbourne struggling against the Warriors. Proctor loses the ball, backwards. Gone from Widow, wide to Nielsen. They're not going anywhere in a, in a forward motion though. And now it's Widow again who's tackled. The Warriors really intense in defence. As it comes from Smith and goes to Cronk. And Cronk puts a kick down the ground. The minor premier is in a bit of trouble here in Melbourne. Lock, oh, oh champions hug an arm out. And is Locke going to get up? Well, he's got to be penalised, surely. 
Well, what are they waiting for? I mean, it just might have been a heavy collision, but... Whack. Yeah, well, how, how do they miss that? What have we got? Well, they won't now. Both. How do they miss that? And I... Number most certain that's the first penalty of this second half. Number four. Simon Mannering, the skipper, waving to the sideline. Young Kevin Locke is in trouble. All right, mate. I'll go, Jeff. Yeah. All right, mate. I don't need you guys. It's a tight game. Need no champion, mate. We're nearly at the point where next try Bo. wins. Bo. Mate, you can do it. You can do whatever you like, okay? Tackles on the report, contact was made high. Okay, so the penalty goes to New Zealand. Bo Champion, the Melbourne Centre goes on report. And just to take that a, a step further for you people, here's the incident again on replay. It's a tackle above the shoulders. And uh, the penalty goes to the Warriors. That will go before the match review committee on Monday. And then possibly on to the judiciary processes but probably is only going to have an effect on Melbourne of course if they make the grand final other than that it might have an effect on the Gold Coast with their start to next year this is Rapira with the ball 35 meters away from the Melbourne line playing it back to Heremeyer and he goes away behind Taylor and picks up Maloney Maloney is taken by Vea he'll play the ball 22 meters out from the line Jeremiah, a dummy half to Johnson. Good service from the dummy half. And the goes from Johnson, goes to Mateo. Mateo is tackled. I thought he'd lost the ball, but he got it back. Plays it back to Brown. Brown running across the ground. And he comes to the middle of the ground where he's held there by the Melbourne defenders. And they gentle him down. Soaking up time. And getting their line set on the last play. So it'll be the... No, it won't be the kick. He's gone for the hand. And it's gone out to Locke, and he's got the ball away. And Tupo throws a pass. It's gone to ground. It's come away from Locke. It went backwards, the pass. Maloney rolls it in. Brown will score. Brown scores for the Warriors. It will go under inspection. There will be examination of this one. But Brown has put the ball down. Well, the Melbourne Storm players are all pointing to the far side, saying that there was a knock-on before it got to Bill Tupo, I think, was the man. But they have been tremendous in the second half, the Warriors. They, they have been the team camped out this end. They have dominated, absolutely dominated. And it's a clever play here from James Maloney. The kick deliberately into space for Lewis Brown, who's a back rower, playing in the centres, and he's been tremendous. Let's have a look. It's the last tackle. Tupo knows that he's got to keep it alive, so he throws it back. Is there a... Oh, gee... There might have been a tiny knock on yeah, there by, by Kevin Locke. Kevin Locke, the fullback. Ball back. Simon Mannering is there, touches it back towards Kevin Locke. I think it hits his hand. Hits his knee. Now he picks it up. I think it hits his knee. It was the last tackle. Well, when it hits his, his knee, his right hand is in the vicinity, and that's... It's a quick like, decision, it, so they're saying knock on. It could be benefit of the doubt here. No. It, it's no try. He's ordered knock on, I would imagine. Melbourne crowd loved the decision. It certainly looked that way on the first replay. Now, the one thing that the Warriors have to do after that decision going against them as we're getting close to the last 10 minutes is not give away a penalty. They cannot piggyback the opposition down to the other end. Melbourne have spent 58% of the time in their own half in the second half. That's a figure I can't quite believe. I thought it would have been more than that. Here's Norrie with the ball. 58% of the time in their own half in the second half. I repeat, I thought it'd be higher than that. Here's Champion with the ball. Player down in back play. I think it's Cronk. Played and Smith it is. Generating the blind side. Slater can do no more. Smith gives the ball back. Widop is with it now. It's gone to Hinchcliffe. Run around for the Englishman. Widop ducks under and goes down under the tackle over there of Mattering. No champion leaving the field, limping off. Last tackle now. Cameron Smith back to first receiver. Kicks it in behind the ruck area, but Kevin Locke gets across quickly. 
Lachlan on his way back towards the 20 meter line for the Warriors. Now we're down with 10 minutes to go in the game. A scoreless second half. 14 12 in favour of New Zealand. Kevin Proctor playing right centre for the injured bow champion. Into a way to Lilliman. Lilliman will play the ball just outside the 30 metre line. They've been to the grand final just once in 2002. They joined the competition in 1995. The trophy has never left Australia, but this New Zealand Warriors may get a chance to do it next weekend. Feletti Mateo's been very conservative too. He's had a lot of runs and very few passes. Whoops. That's okay, it's off the feet. And Anthony Quinn has bundled into the ground. Well, the nerves are jangling everywhere out there. This is really high pressure stuff. This is where you've been training since last October, November. The structures, the systems, all designed to stand up under pressure at this point in a big game. Here's Manu. Cameron Smith is out of this play. He can't take Three, part in that play. He's back now to dummy half, but he was standing in front of the play, the ball. Now it's Hinchcliffe with the ball. Back. 35 away, and has gone through Widop and found Manu. Maloney's on him. Oh, gee, there's some strength from Inu. He picked Manu up like a shearer in a shearing shed and dumped him on the ground. Now, this kick is floating, floating down to Locke. And Locke comes back again. He's good, this kick. And Locke will play the ball. What a game. So the Warriors... ...with the ball on their 30 metre line. Doing everything right, just need to maintain that as Vatavai up the centre again. They're playing this second half in fact, they played the whole game the way they played last week's second half. Dummy half running, dominating the middle third, no errors. Lenny Matteo over halfway. One of the reasons that Matteo probably hasn't been able to offload as much as he normally can, he, I've said it before, he doesn't have the support with him. They're waiting back. He's one player that you would love to follow into every play, into every run. He could run into a traffic jam and get a ball away to you. Yeah, well, the Warriors fullback lock has now got to start worrying about a chip kick for Billy Slater at some stage from Cooper Crock or Cameron Smith because you've got to think the Storm are going to have to pull a rabbit out of their hat here. Fight. Hit by Rapira and Taylor. They've lost only three of their last eight against Melbourne. And here they are with a chance again tonight. And Widop throws the ball. It goes to ground. There's a double knock on in there. Yeah, First one against the Warriors. First one Warriors. First one Warriors. Here's a chance. Now, remember in the first half, Come on. the Storm scored from a scrum from the left-hand side of the field where Slater conjured up something for champion. This is Melbourne Storm's best chance of the whole second period. Well, time out called here because there's a, a blood concern with one of the Warriors players. You can stand up, Melbourne. It's James Maloney. He's got a cut up around his blood scalp beat. area. Grand final day on nine. They'll start at 11 from the ground, that is. The Sunday roast at 10 o'clock from the studios. Then the footy show at 11. The grand final, the New South Wales Cup at midday. Toyota Cup grand final at 2 p.m. Warriors and Cowboys will take some news at 10 past four and then the grand final telecast will start at half past four. That's our coverage as the international networks will join us for our grand final. Okay, guys, nice well, they time. won't stem that blood out. flow just with the towel out there. They need to be careful here that Maloney doesn't have to go off as Cameron Smith from the lock forward position takes it out from the scrum win. So Melbourne what will be play on, play on. One of their last chances seven minutes to go so how many uses would they get under law of averages it's gone to Cronk and he's gone away and it's Crockton to Slater and Slater to Duffy and Duffy just loses his footing there 
and he's put to ground. That was the set play they scored against the Dragons off. Still got tackles up their sleeve. Crop going on to Wolno, and Adam Wolno will play the ball. 15 away from the line. Six minutes to go in the preliminary final. And here's Norrie with the ball. New Zealand defending their line for one of the few times second half. Last tackle. Crook, he goes neatly across. They set themselves. It's come down. It's there for Melbourne. Crook, he goes to Slater. Slater has a ring of defenders around him. He puts a kick in and it goes dead. Back to the 20 is the call. New Zealand have defended it. Incredible. Lock it in. 30 metres out from his own line. Now to run for Tupo. I can't understand why Lock ran up to take a quick tap there. Surely wearing down the clock would be more advantageous. Mind you, they're up the field. Mateo again. Pulled down by Hinchcliff and Proctor. And now it's Johnson turning it inside to Rapira. Off the ball now! Sam Rapira, just outside the 30 metre line. He's gone away from Jeremiah, gone to Maloney, and Maloney, he spins out of the tackle from Ryan Hinchcliffe. Five tackles gone, 20 metres out from the line. Jeremiah to Johnson, Johnson to his right foot. He puts a stabbing rubber kick in, and it's with Slater. Slater's got a problem, he puts it to Duffy, gives it to Duffy, Duffy throws it back into the end goal. Oh. And eventually it's right dead. <laughs> well, that was... That was adventurous. Can you believe this? It was a craziness. Well, it's a sign of the maturity of the young man who kicked it, Sean Johnson. Not letting James Maloney dominate. His kicking game has got better. This game has gone on, and that was the ideal one, and it nearly led to the match-winning try, but they get it back from the restart anyway. It's a long one. It bounces, and Tupo does well to control. So he's sending it back through Madalino, and Madalino will play the ball just outside the 30 meter line playing it back to Locke who goes to Rapira and Rapira will play the ball 21 meters out from the line played back to Jeremiah and he goes away to Maloney and Maloney on the Mannering and Mannering looks at the try line Mannering with the super strength from the lower body is held played back to Locke and Locke goes running back and then gets the pass to Johnson. Johnson's still going. Dummies again, Johnson. Oh, yes. Gets it away to Brown. <laughs> Brown. Brown goes in to score. The Warriors, they're bound for the grand final. Oh, Sean Johnson take a bow. He gave them that opportunity with a marvellous kick at the end of the last set of six. And what sleight of hand here. We know he's had a touch football background. Well, look at this. Goes across field. Throws the big dummy on the inside, he fills everyone, and then the one hand on the outside to Lewis Brown. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. New Zealand are rocking and rolling tonight. Check. Get ready for another visit to the big dance. Get him out of there. Back at uh, Amy Park in Melbourne in front of a record crowd, 28 and a half thousand, and the Warriors are heading for the grand final. Well. There's still 2.29 left on the clock, Rabbits. This is the most important kick of James Maloney's career. It's wide out in the corner, but he can make a bird of it if he kicks this. If not, there's still time for the Storm to conjure up some magic. But he can end it right here if he puts this one down the middle. The most important kick of this young man's career so far. And there was almost a flicker of a smile in from Ivan Cleary. His side six in front. There's four points out. If this goes over, they are definitely there. It is the smartest and most composed performance I can, I've seen from the Warriors in as long as I can remember. They deserve this to go over. Maloney, it looks okay. He's kicked the goal. <laughs> Maloney is the 
Welcome them into the grand final. Unbelievable. And, and that's that football. Sean Johnson, I pointed it out earlier, that this is a footballer, not an athlete. Brilliant. Joey, what did you think of that? Oh, Gus, I'm shaking my head. I seen him play the first time in 2009. I knew this kid had something special. What a player. New Zealand stand and applaud. A new hero comes along. Vladimir. 20 to 12. Just over a minute to go. What a battle next week. Sean Johnson, James Maloney, Daly Cherry Evans, Kieran Foran. Mateo. I told you at the top of the telecast, Melbourne had more trouble with the Warriors than any other club. And that record has stood the test of time through this match tonight. Mateo to play it, 20 metres out from the line. They're eight points in front, and they are booking their appointment with Manly tomorrow week at the big house in Sydney. Johnson with it now. Look at him, running back and putting a kick in, grubbering it across the line. And only a matter of 25 seconds left. And of course the Warriors are already in the grand final with their national youth club side, the, the Toyota Cup side. Two grades in the grand final and their New South Wales Cup team plays for a place in the grand final tomorrow for all three grades. What a season for the New Zealand club. So time ticking away. Referee Tony Archer says that's it. We have got a grand final contestant out of this game to go to Sydney. The New Zealand Warriors to take on the Manly Sea Eagles with a 2012 victory tonight.